My name is Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Ghostland, and this is All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, the 1st of June. And as we always acknowledge, we tape at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. And before we get to our headlines, a thank you to Kim Ward for stepping in and doing a wonderful job reporting on the news. And welcome back, Professor Charles, who we have dearly missed. Thank you. And welcome back, Keith, who was taking care of the horses and the dogs. Oh, F Fawn is very happy <laughs> <laughs> and well-fed. Yeah, good. So for headlines, I know we've covered this before, but it needs covering again, I think. According to the Washington Post, LGBTQ youth have suffered during the pandemic. And I think we, um, we all need to be aware of this. They've had trouble getting health care, mental health care during the pandemic. Um, they felt very isolated and alone. So if you know some, please reach out to them. They really could use it. And in honor of LGBTQ Pride Month, Blues Clues published a video to their YouTube channel showcasing the Blue Clues Pride Parade sing-along. The sing-along includes an animated version of drag queen Nina West, a beloved RuPaul contestant singing to the melody of the ants go marching in. However, the lyrics have been changed to be LGBTQ inclusive. So here is a short clip of their little sing-along for gay pride. <laughs> Hey, Blue, look at all these families. Hi, families. It's time for a pride parade. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. Families marching one by one, hurrah, hurrah. This family has two mommies. They love each other so proudly, and they all go marching in the big parade. And then a lesbian victim of sexual assault was asked in court if she was heterosexual at the at one stage in her life we'll have more about that in tennessee business owners can get up to six months in jail if they don't post a sign warning about transgender shoppers black lives matters matter out black life matters out co-founder patrice colors is leaving the organization Kentucky Foster Agency says they'll punish kids if they can't discriminate against gay couples. Texas firm uh, petitions the court for religious exemption to fire LGBTQ people. We'll have more about that. A pastor was arrested for secretly filming men using the urinal in the church restroom. Parishioners found the camera and turned in the minister. West Virginia pastor William Page, 59, has been arrested for secretly filming men in the church bathroom. <laughs> Oregon out governor signs a bill banning gay trans panic defense. <coughs> Black trans activist Nora Connor dies at 37. No cause of death has been released. Connor was program manager for the collective action for safe spaces and was an organizer for No Justice, No Pride DC. Kareen Jean Pierre is the first gay person to lead a White House briefing. Pioneering lesbian Kay <coughs> Lahusen and Rusty Warren have both died. Lahusen was a gay photographer and activist, and Warren was a risque comedian. She was also a classically trained singer and pianist. And coming up soon is San Francisco International Film Festival called In the Heights. The festival runs for <coughs> 17 days from June 10th to the 27th. And there will be over 50 films. So if you want to know more about this film festival, you should go on www.frameline.org. And an Oregon teen dies after an abduction. And according to gossip, John McCree is poised 
to break the rainbow ceiling as a gay character in Cruella. Ooh. I know. No trans, no binary candidate has a historic primary win in Pennsylvania. <coughs> Tyler Titus won in a Democratic primary race in Erie County. So now he will move on to the general election. Erie County, Pennsylvania or New York? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Alex Dobkin, musician and pioneer in lesbian activism, dies. She was 80. We'll have more about her. And uh, I just wanted to say that uh, quickly that Sarah Schumann has a new book out called Let the Record Show, and it's a political account of ACT UP. This book is a new testament to the fury and beauty of activism during the AIDS crisis, according to the New York Times book reviewer. So that's that one. And um, I just wanted to talk a little later about the Equality Act, which was passed by a margin, a small margin in the House, um, and is uh, heading to the Senate, which we don't think will do much there. And a last story about um, a shop, a uh, repair shop, which was founded in Seattle by um, a woman, and um, it hires all LGBTQ people. And I have a picture of the group of mechanics that are there. Um, and then we have the story about Leslie Stahl, um, who was standing by her show on 60 Minutes that told the stories of trans people who felt they rushed into transitioning and now regret it. And there's a whole issue around this. And Anne, I know um, we were talking about this earlier and uh, everybody is in an uproar about this. Um, what was the percentage you said? Fewer than 1% of people who transition detransition. And the argument and the legitimate concern about this broadcast was that um, it was billed as a segment about transgender health. And it was this distorted presentation that is detrimental to the image of trans people. And um, it's not like they didn't know. They were warned by the head of H human rights campaign that this would be um, problematic. And she decided and, and to it, do it anyway. Well, not only she. I mean, the whole corporate media yeah. um, construct that you know, fuels these decisions. I would say anyone from within the transgender community who has gone through the process of counseling and all of the preliminary steps before you have affirmation surgery start would look at that and say, wait a minute, there are so many barriers to your getting to that final stage that and the other canard that uh, is suggested by that broadcast is the idea that the medical industry is it's trying to pressure into people this. into transitioning, which is total baloney. Well, again, I would say the transgender community would say that their experience is the opposite. Exactly. That they have been asked to delay any decisions versus feeling as though they and there were accelerated. And enough surgeons to be able to do this kind of surgery well, there's no anyway. One, there's no one in Vermont who yeah. currently does there's it. Everyone has to be referred out of state. And uh, apropos of that, we'd recommend the film Born to Be that explores the right. shortage of people um, who to perform do. the surgery. Yeah. But, and I may I just add one more thing? Yeah. The Sarah Schulman book has gotten rave reviews. Yes. And I've seen her interviewed in several contexts. It's a fabulous book. It was reviewed by John Kalecki, our colleague in front of the show, uh, in the recent issue of the Gay and Lesbian Review. It's 800 pages, but I've heard it goes by really quickly. And it gives so, a lot, a lot, you know, it, it sets the record straight about what really happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So. They should have published it pre-COVID because we would have had more than enough time for the 800 plus pages. Mm -hmm. But you're going to take me to far and distant places. 
But no, finished? I'm finished. But no penguins this week. No penguins. Ugh. But Any a lot of news, and I've arranged it thematically, starting with opponent opposition to same-sex marriage. Lithuania Parliament votes against debating same-sex marriage in a partnership bill that was defeated by um, 63 to 65, 65 against. But what's just especially disturbing is that thousands of people marched against it in Lithuania. Um, a Namibian, Namibian court has postponed a same-sex marriage recognition until next year, and two couples have brought suit, and this has been going through the courts for several years. Um, one is, of each couple, one is a Namibian national and the other is from another country, Mexico and Germany, respectively, I believe. Um, but on a, another indecisive note, the Namibian court, I remember mentioning in the past the big fight over those twins that were born in South Africa uh -huh. to gay parents, and the Namibian court has granted them provisional passports in also their older brother, the two-year-old. So now they have provisional passports, but the Namibian government is quick to assure everyone that that doesn't mean they can be citizens. So in a new poll um, following the oppositional curve, in a new poll, 72.5% of Panamanians oppose marriage equality and 18 wow. 0.4% support it. And this puts Panama in a tight spot because they have been ordered by the Inter-American Court of Human Rights to legalize same-sex marriage. And they have a deadline. Um, and so if they don't meet the deadline, their only recourse is to withdraw from the international Inter-American Court of Human Rights. And so far, the vice president says he doesn't plan to do that, but that's... He doesn't plan to push it forward, you mean? He doesn't plan to withdraw. Oh, okay. So, I don't know. Um, My list of places I won't be visiting is, yeah. is, is starting to get longer. I know it. Um, and I think you should put Ghana on it, because after 21 people were arrested for advocating LGBTQ activities in Ghana, an outcry has ensued. And this was the, you know, an information, informational conference for paralegals and uh, organized by um, Rightly Ghana. And what was unpleasant, especially unpleasant, is that the media colluded with the police. So journalists came to the conference and started taking everybody's pictures and then the police raided it and arrested 21 people for advocating Jeez. LGBTQ activities. So homophobia in Ghana is on the rise. Any um, Poland this week? No Poland, but uh, Lithuania oh, yeah. is Close. in the same region. Close. That's the um, deplorable country for, of the evening. Um, Bangkok is another um, oppositional arena after the police have raided a gay sauna party uh, in Bangkok. Uh, Thailand is the oppositional country in this story. They arrested 62 people. Oh. Nosy neighbors sent in a tip, according to this report, and said that um, drug use was occurring and same-sex activities were occurring. And so the police came and discovered that uh, according to this report, same-sex activity was occurring in this club, and drug use was also occurring. So 67 people were arrested. Um, now I have more. Um, I have sports news now. Um, I have a picture before you now. Um, oh, and speaking of pictures, I want to show you a picture of the parliamentarian from Lithuania. His name is Tomas Raskavicius. He's a gay rights activist and the first 
first gay rights activist to be elected to parliament in Lithuania. So he's arguing for this same-sex partnership bill. But to return to my picture now, uh, I'd like to show you a queer Vietnamese athlete who went from homelessness to uh, being an international advocate. Her name is Amazon Latai. Um, and she has had a pretty awful life. Her mother took her to an orphanage when she was a baby, and um, she was adopted and moved to Australia by foster parents, where uh, as an Asian, she encountered a lot of discrimination. I mean, on sports teams, people said, mm -hmm. um, the, the team is slower because you're Asian, that kind of thing. Uh, right now, she's an international LGBTQ advocate, however, helping to or she helped to organize the first Spirit Gay under the Obama administration uh, in collaboration with GLAAD and the White House. Um, she's also um, helped foster the White House Initiative on Asian American and Pacific Islanders. Um, sports saved her life. Um, She's a bodybuilder. You can't really tell from the picture, um, but she committed herself to pull herself out of. She moved to Europe and had hit rock bottom, became homeless. Um, so she pulled herself out of her malaise by um, initiating a routine of 100 dumbbell curls, sit-ups and push-ups each day. Um, and so she's able to use her sports as a platform uh, last month, she hosted a series of Outsports Conversations for AAPI Heritage Month. Um, she wants to lift people up wherever she can, said this reporter, kind of tongue-in-cheek. And her role model is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> okay, on to entertainment and miscellaneous news. Oh, uh, one more sports uh, point. A transgender woman is allowed to play rugby in France after a unanimous federation vote. And as we've been mentioning, the um, world rugby has been pretty homophobic, um, but France, world rugby uh, became the first international just organization to say women, transgender women should not compete at elite and international levels. Um, but now France, French Rugby Federation said transitioning women could play as long as they, you know. Their hormones are down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they have hormonal treatment for 12 months. Um, so French Rugby Federation is ahead of the curb. Um, and it's the first national federation in France to allow transgender women to take part in the elite sport. Um, okay. Now may I go on to um, miscellaneous <laughs> and entertainment news. Starting with, oh, okay, I showed you the picture of Amazon Latte. Now I'd like you to show you the picture of Brooke Blurton, who is a competitor in Bachelorette Australia. She's making history. Um, and the program is making history by casting the first openly bisexual and the first indige indigenous woman to lead the franchise. Uh, she's going to be on the show's 2021 season with both men and women competing. Um, she says, I'm not too sure if Australia is ready for it, I certainly am. If it makes people uncomfortable in any way, I really challenge them to think about why it does. So, Brooke Blurton. More news. <clears throat> I have another picture now before you of Paulo Gustavo Brazil. Paulo Gustavo, Brazil's uh, beloved comedic actor who died of COVID. Um, it's a very sad story. Um, he died last week. Uh, he's a Rio native. Um, 
and he's survived by his husband and their one-year-old twins. Um, he starred in a show called My Mother is a Character. Uh, his husband's a dermatologist. They were married in December 2015. 2015. Um, his death has Stirred, stirred wild, widespread mourning on both sides of the political spectrum. Um, the leftist former um, president mourned him and even hard-hearted Jair Bolsonaro, has, who's made Aww. disparaging and dis homophobic remarks toward the LGBTQ community. He tweeted his sadness about Gustavo's death with his talent and charisma he con conquered the affection of all Brazil. So that's his picture, very sad. Um, in an interesting note that remains controversial, UK theaters have backed transgender actors for trans roles. Um, a group of British theaters say it will only cast trans actors uh, and performers because Performers must mirror the sexuality or gender identity of the characters they play. The trans casting statement <coughs> signed by over 40 theaters, including the Royal Court and the Oxford Playhouse, also committed to actively seeking casting opportunities of any gender for trans actors. The theater said their aim was to boost trans visibility on stage and to better support what can be a marginalized community. We were just talking about that with the Leslie Stahl. Um, I have three more headlines I'll rush through. <laughs> the world's first non-binary mayor has been elected in Wales. His name is Owen Herkham. He's 23. There he is in his official ceremonial outfit. Um, I mean, I have two clips that are coming up. I want to preview them. And I have a clip from the film Hating Peter Tatchell, which is on Netflix. But we'll... We saw that. We'll, we saw it. We'll explore it in greater yeah. detail. So June <laughs> is traditionally Pride Month. So the National Park Service came out with a list of these are the national monuments that the LGBTQ plus community should visit. And one of them is the Vicksburg National Military Park in Vicksburg, Mississippi. Why would we want to go to Mississippi? And Linda got it first guess, no hesitation. So the pressure's on you. <laughs> Looking at the most recent issue of The Advocate, they have champions of pride, outstanding activists from around the country, two Vermonters. Mm. One is Becca Ballant, who huh. were not that surprised. The other person who is recognized is Gustavo Mercado Munez, who is the coordinator for the Transgender Project at the Pride Center. Mm -hmm. They are someone who has been doing a great job at advocating on behalf of the transgender community, usually without a lot of recognition. So congratulations, Gustavo. In Connecticut, they passed HB 6321. Don't you love all those numbers? This is a parenting act, and it passed their Senate by a 35 to 0 vote, their House by 141 to 1. And what this does is that it gives unmarried same-sex couples exactly the same rights as unmarried heterosexual couples so that following the birth of your child, the non-birthing parent can merely sign a document and be acknowledged as a parent. Mm. No court action, no further action needs to happen, and you don't have to be married to do it. So if you've right. got plans in Connecticut, <laughs> GLAAD, Gay, Lesbian, Advocates, and Defenders, they have said they are not participating in Boston's Pride Day this year. And it's because of Pride's lack of action on diversifying their board and, and changing mm -hmm. their parade and what's going on. And, 
and GLAD said they're doing this in solidarity with the trans resistance movement and Pride for the People. And Pride for the People is an organization that is former Pride volunteer and organizers who have left the organization because of some of the stances that they have is taken. It is or it the partly lack because of, of corporate? It's a whole host of issues, including there's, you know, the BIPOC community is not on their board and involved in making right. decisions. The transgender community is not. You cannot see yourself looking back at you from the people who are making the decisions in the construction of their pride events. However, they are supporting a visual and a march that's happening June 12th in Jamaica Plain, yeah. <laughs> starting Jamaica. at 11 o'clock at Franklin Park. All right. Oh. Break that down, Linda. You probably know where it is. I do. Also in Massachusetts, Malayla Miller, and I believe Kim made reference to this on the last show, there's, a, there's been a strong public outcry from both the activists and the legislators saying there needs to be an open and independent investigation into what happened. Malayla, 16-year-old youth of color, was determined to have initially ruled to have committed suicide by hanging. Mm -hmm. There's some real questions because mm -hmm. there's indication that there's a beating that occurred. And as one of the legislators said, how did a black girl end up dead in the woods in a nearly all white town? It just doesn't, and apparently the state's attorney who is prosecuting is not forthcoming with any information. <clears throat> I was gonna say there's something about it. she was supposed to have hung herself, but she, a lot of evidence implies that she did not. Well, and also there have been witness accounts that she was involved in an altercation with other youth prior to being found. Mm -hmm. So it gives this whole aura of, is this another cover-up? Yeah. You know, are people just not pushing because it's a person of color, predominantly white? In a white community, yeah. Bingo. Queer Connect, June 26th, will be starting caravans, pride caravans, get out your flags and best outfits, one starting in Bennington, one starting in Rutland, going down Route 7 and meeting in Manchester Center. Uh -huh. And it starts at 11 o'clock. There is still organizing that's going on, but if you go onto the Queer Connect Facebook page, as Queer Connect has told me, they haven't updated their website in a while. So their Facebook page, you can get the details, and they're going to they're going to have floats, but they're not going to be part of the caravan. It will be you know displayed on the streets, walking by. And there was a wonderful story in Digger this week about a youth in Rutland who reached out to the Rutland Alive group mm -hmm. about putting up pride flags mm -hmm. up and down the streets and his saying, you know, having grown up in Rutland as an LGBTQ youth, he didn't see a lot of acknowledgement and support for who he was. <laughs> now he sees it every day when he goes out. The other thing we're going to be watching and we're expecting a decision this month is the U.S. Supreme Court of Fulton versus the city of Philadelphia. And I was in a, conference, a national conference call talking about the potential implications of this bill that if a private organization, religious base, is allowed to discriminate against LGBTQ, how pervasive that actually could end up being. Mm. Good news. Not good news, but news. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> You got my attention. I know. <laughs> well, some of this stuff you just feel like it's it's it you know it's out of some fantasy. I mean I don't know, but the lesbian victim of sexual assault was asked in court oh. if she was heterosexual at one stage in her life. I mean you can't make this stuff up, right? A woman who accused a man of sexually assaulting her at a party in 2018 took the stand. The woman said she could not have consented to sex as she was asleep 
and was a lesbian. During the trial, the judge asked her if she was sure of her sexuality oh. at the time the assault occurred. So, What happened to him? Nothing. Nothing, no. I don't know what the outcome of that case was. It didn't say. But if I hear more information, I will certainly let everybody know. You should be disbarred. I know, really. I mean, can you imagine? Unfortunately, yes, I can, but okay. Mm -hmm. And here's another bill. Oh, no. I mean, it just... In Tennessee, business owners can get up to six months in jail if they don't post a sign warning about transgender shoppers. What does that mean, warning? Transgender shoppers may shop here? I'm going to tell you. Okay. Bathroom. The sponsor of the new Tennessee law requires signs that warn customers that transgender women can use the bathroom in their establishment and that the owners could go to jail if they don't follow the law and post a sign. Representative Tim Ruddle, a Republican, says that not posting these signs is a Class B misdemeanor. Last week, Governor Bill Lee, Republican, signed a bill which bans health care professionals from providing health care to trans people. Mm. So. And Black Lives Matter Out co-founder Patrice Cullors <coughs> is leaving the organization. Cullors dismissed false allegations of misusing funds as the reason for leaving and said the foundation's agenda remains the same to eradicate white supremacy and build life-affirming institutions. She says she is just moving on to do a second book and accept a TV development deal. So. We read her first book, When They Call You a Terrorist. It was really good. It was really good, yeah. 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 I look forward to the second one. And here's another story. You know, I mean, it's really... You can't make it up. No. Kentucky Foster Agency says they'll punish kids if they can't discriminate against gay couples. Sunrise Children's Services is a foster and adoption agency affiliated with the Baptist Church and is refusing to sign a contract with the state of Kentucky which mandates that all agencies in the state sign. The group said they will punish the children unless they get an exemption to discriminate against LGBTQ people. The agency is one of the largest in the state, which includes taking care of LGBTQ kids who have been thrown out of their homes or for other reasons are on the street. The state will compel them or they will lose funding, but Sunrise says they will never sign. So. See, those are specifically the type of instances that the Fulton versus City of Philadelphia and that right. U.S. Supreme yeah. Court decision will have a strong impact on, on that kind of stuff. What happens? Right. Now, here's an even more outlandish: <laughs> Texas firm petitions the court for religious exemption to fire LGBTQ people. The court says no, so the firm would at least like to be allowed to fire bisexuals. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Steve Holt <I> says... <laughs> Steve Holt says <clears throat> his company, Braidwood Manager, employs 70 people and operates as a Christian business. And he doesn't allow his company to hire people who engage in sexual immoral behavior. He argues that the law violates his religious freedom and free association rights. And these beliefs apparently forbid him from being near LGBTQ people. He argues that it is possible to discriminate against LGBTQ people without taking sex into account and therefore doing it without violating Title VII. He lists rules he could name <coughs> that he could make up that would be neutral when it comes to sex, but would allow him to never hire LGBTQ people. Here are a few examples of what he would like to ask. No employee, male or female, may enter a gay bar or bathhouse. No employee, male or female, may engage in sexual practices associated with homosexuality. 
Oh, you're in trouble. I know. <laughs> and third, I mean, there was this whole list. I picked the three charming ones. No employee may use grinder. <laughs> <laughs> and the list goes on and on. There are about 10 of them. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> unbelievable, really, when you think about it. So <clears throat> what can I say? Um, however, there's a sad story in Oregon that teen dies after an abduction. A suspect in the abduction has been charged. Olive Taylor, 17, died of a gunshot wound after being kidnapped. Kenneth Peden III uh, drove away from the police in a pickup truck with Taylor in the car. When the suspect was apprehended, Taylor was found dead in the passenger seat of the car. So. Mm. And Alex Dobkin, Musician and pioneer in lesbian activism dies. She was 80. She was an early leader in the music scene for lesbians and women. She passed away at her home in Woodstock, New York from a brain aneurysm and stroke. In 1973, Dobkin uh, formed a group called Lavender Jane with Kay mm -hmm. Gardner. Remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. They produced the first ever entirely produced and directed and sung album by women, so there was that. Um, let's see, we did Sarah, oh, and um, so the Equality Act was passed by a narrow margin in the House and is now live in the Senate um, where they can <coughs> stop it and probably will, so, um, we had reported before that Susan Collins, who had been right. a sponsor in the past, wants religious exemptions. Otherwise, she's not passing it. Yeah. Yeah. And I read a headline that said the Equality Act is dead. Yeah. 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 That shop was Repair Revolution, founded in Seattle in 2012 by mechanic Ellie Allison. In industry, both Allison and Schricker, the two people who work there, and the owner characterized as rife with toxic ma masculinity and homophobia. Allison hopes repair revolution is an oasis, a place where any type of person, queer or not, can take their car without judgment. So um, we have a picture of this group. They are a fantastic looking group of young people doing car repairs. Well, that reminds me, I hate to hark back to that um, concerned lesbian auto body that was written up in the lesbian issue of Signs. Yes, and? Many years ago. Yeah, yeah. So. And I have a, a friend in, in Wisconsin who is a um, middle-aged lesbian now, I would say, who um, has her own auto body and mechanic repair shop so maybe it's a trend yeah let's hope Keith no and <laughs> well <please>. professor Charles <laughs> I know sorry I have to rush to apologize to um, Owen Herkham whose picture I showed him referred to him with the male pronoun I knew I was going to do that and uh, it's my mistake I apologize Owen uses they um, and since we're talking about them, let me just quote. They say, I may only be 23, but I have a wealth of experience of local government and a fantastic team behind me. So I know we are set up to face challenges ahead. He added that representation is more than just putting on the chain, which refers to the ceremonial outfit. And I'm glad to have received thousands of positive messages from non-binary people the world over saying it, what it means to see me in this role. So congratulations, Owen, and I'm sorry about the pronoun. I'll do better. One story I omitted and a picture. I'd like to show you a picture of Lux Air's plane. I just learned that the word livery doesn't only mean servants' outfits, it means um, iconography on a plane. 
So in honor of Pride Month, this plane which you are seeing before you has a sign that says, Be Pride, Be Luxembourg. Uh, it's in time for Pride, Pride Month. It has partnered with Rosa Lucebush, which I looked up, looked up. Mm -hmm. um, which is an organization that's been fighting for LGBT rights since 1996. In Luxembourg. Mm -hmm. uh, we are extremely pleased that Luxair has taken the initiative and consulted us. Uh, and the first flight is going to go to Ibiza. So, to where? Ibiza. That island off of Spain. Can we go there? I'd love to go there. <laughs> No, want, do we really want to, to go, go there? there? Is that, yeah. I want to go to Mallorca, another one of mm -hmm. those, uh, a place in that area. Yeah. On another note, I'd like to echo what Linda was saying about hating Peter Chacho. Born in Australia, he became famous over the years as a vocal campaigner against injustice around the world. Primarily fighting for LGBTQ equality, He's also protested against the war in Vietnam and famously attempted to conduct a citizen's arrest on Robert Mugabe, mm -hmm. the dictator in yeah. Zimbabwe. Yeah. And that's where he won the public heart, I think. Uh, his elaborate publicity stunts, always with media in tow, creatively bring attention to problems suffered by marginalized groups and use headlines to prompt a discussion. Depending on who you ask, he is the most hated man in Britain, a hero or something in between. Let's look <laughs> at a clip of this documentary available on Netflix. by anti-gay protesters in Moscow today someone protect me, someone protect me. before being arrested by police. Being targeted for violent attack comes with the territory. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Tatchell. Stop homophobia in the Commonwealth. Peter Tatchell has devoted his life to proceeding for homosexuals. When people in power won't show compassion, sometimes you have to up the ante. He writes the book on how to do a protest. Peter is a performance artist. I am trying to ensure the arrest of a torture. Robert. He deserves recognition for his extraordinary contribution to the happiness of millions who've never heard of him. The whole gay community owes you because of your bravery and your courage. Gay activist Peter Tatchell refused to move on. Please, please, please. No, we are not moving away. Does Peter have an ego? Yes, you need an ego to perform. Can you shut up now, I'm please? I'm not going to shut up. This is not oh, a free and right. open debate. This is the most disliked man in Britain. From the early days, I thought Peter was a brave motherfucker. Let me be frank, I don't think Peter was always helping. If you really, let me finish, really, let me finish, really let me finish. The church for 2,000 years will be saying we're sick and sinful and immoral and we're going to burn in hell. The Archbishop of Canterbury was interrupted today by a gay rights protest. Dr Carey opposes lesbian and gay human rights. He's a bullying kind of chap trying to get his own way. Real men don't get insecure about gay men. Real right. men can cope with it. scared by a few gay men. Hey, Peter Fatchell, I'll see you again, you pussy! What keeps me going is the knowledge that the homophobes who are against me want me to give up. Just like the suffragettes, all the black civil rights movement in America, we have to get a bit angry and confrontational. We've tried to play by the rules, it hasn't worked, now we're going to break the rules. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, unfortunately, he's getting up in years. Maybe he's in his 60s. Mm -hmm. Or 70s. Uh, and, you know, so many people have punched That's him. That's not up in years. That's our age. Yeah, That's young know. and vital. <laughs> <laughs> well, unfortunately, he's been hit in the head so many times <laughs> that, you know, it's beginning to affect his health. Yeah. And they told him, you can't get hit again, but still he goes Oh, out. concussion syndrome. Yeah, it's yeah. like football. He gets hit so much in demonstrating. 
And you can. In, I thought I thought you were joking. But. No, in the <laughs> okay. clip you can see he really takes one to the jaw. So, mm -hmm. uh, very provocative figure. I, we recommend it. It was fun. You say? Yeah, informative. Yeah. Okay, Keith. So, just some quick follow-ups to stories that we followed before looking at the legislature. Um, H-177 is on its way to the governor for signature, and this is the bill that would amend the city of Montpelier's charter to allow non-citizen voting in municipal elections. And I know we had people within our community who were very interested. The other bill that is on its way to the governor for signature is H-360. This is the broadband expansion, and it looked as though it wasn't going to pass. Oh. The Senate and the House had different ideas of how to approach this. The House wanted it only to be what are called the communications union districts, the municipalities. They would be the ones who would be taking the lead on these initiatives. The Senate wanted to bring in the private internet providers as part of the equation. Oh. They reached a compromise. That And part of it was because the municipalities really do not have the expertise and the hardware to extend into the true, true rural areas where broadband doesn't exist and is truly needed. The private providers weren't willing to do it because right. it wasn't cost effective for them. Well, the private providers can now be part of the legislative appropriation if they are working in partnership with the community union districts. Hmm. So it's this merger of public-private that may give us the final push going out. Good. That would be nice. It, the other bill that was of interest was S-99, and this eliminates the statute of limitation on childhood abuse. Hmm. And this was the one that was really pushed by the survivors, uh, and I say survivors of the St. Joseph Orphanage, where they have been telling their story for years, mm -hmm. waiting for someone to listen about what they endured while they were in the orphanage. And people finally heard. And what this does is there is no statute of limitation. Mm -hmm. So, because before it had been, you know, you had X number of years mm -hmm. after you were mm -hmm. able to recall or after you reached the age of majority. Well, that for childhood abuse, that's totally an unreasonable standard. You cannot. That reminds me of a horrible story I heard last yesterday about a, the Catholic, a Catholic orphanage oh, in yeah, Canada. Oh, yeah, they found the bodies. They found the bodies of like 500 children. Okay. Indigenous well, children. Bingo. Mm -hmm. That that was the piece is That's horrible. That, that was the movement. And we did it here in America. There is mm -hmm. an exhibit in Phoenix mm -hmm. where we went into the indigenous communities, we took their children right. and put them into reformatories and taught them how to be white. We removed their culture from them. But these were and, killed. Well no, they, there's a number of theories about what happened, you know. Was it the natural result of, you know, like the flu that wiped out or something for which they were not attentive, but they hid it. Rather than owning what was going on, if there was a legitimate cause, that, you know, and the, it's outrageous. Uh, reporter I heard said, you know, these bodies are all over, this has happened all over Canada. Bingo. Also, really quickly, with, before I get to the trivia question, Kim had questioned about the eugenics project and, you know, how did they go about what they were doing and how, how extensive was it really? Archives in Middlesex has 56 boxes of sur surveys of people with special pedigrees. Mm. How they did, how the eugenics project did what they did is it was run by social workers. Hmm. And the organizations that were part of this project 
were the Department of Public Welfare, Department of Public Health, Department of Education, the Commissioner of the Vermont State Hospital, the Superintendent of the Vermont State School, that was the, what was called the Brandon Training School for Developmentally Disabled, Vermont Industrial School, Rutland mm -hmm. Reformatory for Women, Vermont State Prison. What they did is they identified what would be the point of contact with the state by the undesirables, mm -hmm. and then they worked backwards. If you are somebody who is coming in and asking assistance, who else in your family is out there that we might want to consider? Mm. So, it, I mean, it was insidious. And in addition to the official, and it was, you know, having a friend who works in the archives, they also had what they called town informants. Oh. Now I want you to think about you know. So you could turn what? in your wife if you thought she was you wanted to hang out with a neighbor. No, it was reaching out to those people who thought the same way that you did. Think of the white supremacist mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of that and the names that they were getting. Mm. So it's chilling. Fi Fifty six boxes oh. of documents. And this went on longer than what people realized before it was finally closed. Oh. So, so Vicksburg, National Military Park, LGBTQ, good going, Linda. <laughs> On one of the monuments, it lists the over 36,000 soldiers who, who were involved in the Battle of Vicksburg from the state of Illinois. One of those names is Albert Cashier who may have been born Jenny Hodgers. Jenny truly, from all of the documentation, identified as a trans masculine and enlisted as a man, served as a man, was engaged in over 40 Civil War battles, collected a veteran's pension as a man, voted as a man. And how all of this got disclosed is that at one point later in their life, they needed hospitalization medical care, and it was like, oh my. The other people from their brigade came and testified on their behalf saying, no, they are a man ah. and should be treated as such. <laughs> and the estimate was that there were at least 400 women who enlisted in the Civil War as men. Wow. So, there we go. Someone should do so, a documentary. Has anybody done a documentary about that? Not that I know no. of. Well, if they had all of this documentation, I am surprised that somebody hasn't done something. Yeah. So On with that, that note, huh? with that, you need Remember to- Remember to always resist. resist.